Cyclics. The title of this study is uh, the use of obrutinib for the treatment of steroid refractory and steroid dependent chronic graft versus host disease. It is a 1B phase 2 uh, extension study of 42 subjects who have steroid refractory chronic GVHD. This is a rare disease, an orphan disease indication. Patients go through an allogeneic transplant in order to cure their blood leukemia, lymphoma, malignancies. Uh, unfortunately, some fraction, about half, develop a deleterious immune response of the donor's immune system against skin, gut, and liver called chronic graft-versus-host disease. And half of that half, or about a quarter of all patients, end up on steroids for a prolonged period and would qualify as having steroid-dependent chronic GVHD. There are no approved indications. There's no therapies to get patients off of those uh, steroid treatments. And many of the syndromes of chronic GVHD look like autoimmune syndromes that you may have thought of as scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, fasciitis, and those problems are of course uh, and, uh, hard to live with. Uh, patients, uh, not only are they stuck on steroids, but they have a lot of comorbidities. So bringing a new therapy forward has been my own and many other docs' uh, primary interest uh, for years. Um, Abrutinib got the attention of the community with its tremendous successes in the management of B-cell malignancies. And uh, prior to uh, the Abrutinib approval in 2013, it was evident that allogeneic B-cells had a pathogenic role in the development of chronic GVHD. We had done prior studies in animal models doing B-cell depletion, rituximab therapies that had been looking for a very potent drug that would block through those cells that are being activated after an allogeneic transplant. And Abrutinib offered that promise as we uh, learned more about the drug, we also learned that there was a potential benefit through the T-cell modulation of an ortholog molecule called IL-2 tyrosine kinase, ITK. It's nearly identical, binds in the same fashion to abrutinib, in fact even has a cysteine residue that allows for the covalent irreversible inhibition of ITK the same way that uh, BTK and B-cells is occurring. There's a, a concern that you would have just wiped out all the T cells, but fortunately there's a rescuing molecule that allows for persistence of cytotoxic T cells and regulatory T cells while eliminating the damaging T helper cells, T follicular cells, and, and uh, TH17 cells. Okay, maybe that's too much jargon, but the basic science that led into this in the preclinical studies really suggested we were hitting the pathogenic mechanisms of chronic GVHD and warranted moving forward in this phase one, phase two study. We began in July of 2014 using standard dose of brutinib, 420 milligrams daily. It was a phase one leading into the phase two. There were no DLTs and all patients received that dose, 420 milligrams. Tomorrow morning, we'll present the mature data. It's been presented earlier at the European Bone Marrow Transplant uh, meetings last spring. Uh, it was this earlier data that got the attention of the FDA, and it, the FDA has granted the uh, drug for this indication a breakthrough therapy uh, indication. Hey, so what we present tomorrow will actually be the package that the FDA considers for whether or not this drug should advance into a, a, an indication. Uh, 42 patients treated. Uh, median uh, time on drug, 13 months. Uh, there were patients, uh, seven of whom of those 42, remain on drug now more than two and a half years uh, post-therapy. The overall response rate considering all 42 patients is 67%. And of those who have that high level of, uh, very promising level of overall response, 72% have persistent responses going on five months and more. And as I say, we have many patients still on drug and we're still following what the benefits of those patients will be. The um, other, of course, concern in a phase one study is what's the side effects? Uh, there are side effects, and anytime you use these tyrosine kinase uh, receptor inhibitors, we seem to see the same side effects over and over again. That is uh, fatigue, uh, myalgias, nausea, uh, cramping, and uh, for that matter, and unique maybe to abrutinib, bleeding concerns. There were no major hemorrhagic bleeding concerns. There were no cardiac uh, toxicities uh, witnessed in this study. There uh, is a little bit of bleeding that's analogous to being on steroids with aspirin, and that can be bruising uh, that's evident on skin. The overall serious adverse event report was 52%. That, that is significant. Um, it's also the same as was seen in patients who were treated for CLL, mantle cell, the randomized resonate study, uh, as well as my own study, looking at the treatment of CLL and other allogeneic transplant patients who had relapsed after a transplant. So this 50% serious adverse event seems to be um, 
the concern and the question going forward will be, can you um, mitigate that with uh, dose reductions or better management as we get the same benefit in this um, disease called chronic graft versus host disease? We have some new studies coming. Um, the excitement of this one uh, has led to us, us to approach the company and fortunately we're thrilled that they are interested in sponsoring a very large study. It's uh, 186 patients in the uh, upfront treatment of uh, chronic graft versus host disease. So rather than waiting until people are steroid refractory and steroid dependent, now coming up and uh, adding this to the initial treatment with high dose steroids, hoping that steroids can be quickly tapered off, that the benefits of abrutinib will allow patients uh, potentially even to uh, not have have uh, steroid-dependent chronic GHD ever developed. Um, it's placebo-controlled, randomized, it's the gold standard of clinical trial designs, it's international, uh, and it is already starting. Um, my own center uh, opened it uh, this week, so uh, we're looking, of course, for uh, patients to partner uh, with us uh, in the exploration of the benefits of this drug, and, uh, and, and that kind of raises the other issue, right? Of course, the, the patients who are, uh, up to this point, uh, going through with no approved therapies, trying other drugs off-label or on other clinical trials, and still coming forward to participate in these clinical trials, uh, not enough can be said about um, you know, how committed they are to their own care, but to helping others as well. So uh, that was a big part of the story, uh, having the patients uh, that were willing to be you know, really the subjects of helping uh, bring this drug forward to development. Um, Last place where we hope the drug will help is in the prevention of chronic GVHD. And we have three investigator-initiated studies that are uh, going on at Stanford, uh, Vanderbilt, and uh, Moffitt at this point to uh, prevent chronic GVHD by initiating a brutinib at 420 milligrams beginning uh, 56 days, roughly two months after transplant and continuing on past a year. So that um, large, uh, again, investigator-initiated study consortium at three different sites with three different studies promises to provide uh, information over 200 patients over the next two to three years to ask, does it actually prevent chronic GVHD or, or at least uh, uh, decrease the risk of chronic GVHD? We're pretty excited about the opportunities.